sheriff this morning. Mount Calvary is located at 1807 Dandridge Avenue, Knoxville, Tennessee. Let us all stand in this house of worship. Thank you for joining us. As you're all standing, we ask that you pray this morning as Reverend Charles Fells will be bringing the message. Amen. Spirit of the living God.
kind would have the scripture followed by the prayer. Morning, our scripture this morning comes from First Peter, first chapter, third through the seven verses from the NLT version. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. And when we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive his this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly great, be truly glad that there is wonderful joy ahead, even even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith is far precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, It will bring much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Amen Amen. Amen. to the word of God. Let us bow in prayer. Father, it's again that you've allowed us a few of your believing children. Yes, Father to assemble ourselves here in the house of prayer. Father, first of all, we come thanking you for last night's lying down. Lord, Lord, didn't we thank you for this morning's early arise? Thank you, Lord, when we woke up, we were in the four corners of a room, not the four corners of a grave. We thank you, Lord, for grace and for mercy. We realize it was grace that woke us up. And mercy started us on our way. So we come this morning to say much obliged. Lord, we thank you for a place of worship. We thank you for the privilege to come and to worship. Lord, we thank you for the choir singing and and for prayers being uttered. We thank you for your word. Father, somebody laid down last night, didn't get up this morning. Somebody is in a hospital room. Somebody's in a jail cell. But Father, you've allowed us another chance to come to your house of prayer. And since we're here, Lord, we think we ought to just go ahead and give you some praise. For you are worthy of all of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we understand that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So we pray now that you would bless us with your spirit. Let your spirit fill this house. Bless your man servant as he prays unto us the bread of life. Bless these men as they sing Zion praises. Bless each and every home that's represented here. And then, Lord, when it's your time to call, our time to answer. We don't need you to call us by name. But if you'll say, servant, well done. Lord, we'll know that our living has not been in vain. So we claim it today in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father that you would bless us with your spirit in this place. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, in the name of him who died, in the name of him who was buried, in the name of him who did get up, in the name of him that has all power in his hand. It's in his name that we ask this prayer. Amen. Thank God.
sometimes Don't they get you? Friends, they get you sometimes Friends, they get you sometimes I'm waiting on you Yes, Lord One more thing I get mistreated sometimes Mistreated sometimes. I get mistreated sometimes. I'm waiting on Please, Lord. Let me get everybody to clap your hands. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix my heart. Fix my mind. Do it for me right now. I know you're able. You got all power in the palm of your hand. Won't God fix it? Fix it, Jesus. Anybody been sick? Anybody been sick? Tell me. Did God fix it? Anybody had pain? for the April activities for the trustee board meeting. It is at 6 o'clock. 
However, the official board meeting is 30 minutes later at 6.30, not 7 o'clock. So make that correction. The official board meeting uh, this Tuesday is at 6.30, not 7 o'clock. Also in the bulletin, you'll see that we have a quarterly church meeting coming up on Friday, April the 26th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Next Sunday, the agendas, which will have the Zoom information, will be available after church. So you can pick up your agendas next Sunday, but uh, make sure to mark Friday, April the 26th on your calendars. Also add to your calendars that we will have a baptism next Sunday, amen? Amen. amen. Jamari Goins came forward last Sunday and, um, and so he is a candidate for baptism, and his baptism is scheduled for next Sunday at 9.50 a.m. Reverend Robert Marks will be conducting the baptism. Amen? Amen. Amen? So glad for that. For stewardship, you can give your tithes and offerings as you leave the sanctuary. If you're joining us remotely, you can give tithes and offerings um, uh, remotely online at our website, MT Calvary. Knox.com, and you can also send or stop by 1807 Dandridge Avenue 37915. Now we'll welcome our visitors. Amen. While he's coming forward, let me uh, say Reverend Charles Fell's name again. He is our preacher for today. He is a retired Episcopal priest. And it is so good to have his experience and to have his wisdom and to have the word of God come from Charles Fell. So be praying for him. He has certainly been praying for you. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning. morning. I'm Hurtis Hodges, and I have the honor of welcoming our guests this morning. To our guests present with us and to those watching online, welcome and thank you for choosing Mount Calvary as your place of worship. If you are a guest and you're present here this morning, will you please stand and allow us to acknowledge your presence? Let's give a Mount Calvary welcome. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy today's service. We also would like to extend an open invitation to you to join us and participate in other services offered here at Mount Calvary. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or online, you are invited to our Bible studies and prayer services. Sunday school every Sunday morning, 9 to 9.45 for all ages. Online classes are also offered for all ages. Our Christian Family Fellowship, Wednesday from 6 to 7.45 p.m. with dinner starting at 6.30 and Bible study, <coughs> Bible study from 6.45 to 7.45. We also have midweek prayer services each Wednesday, 12 noon to 12.30 via Zoom. With that, I'll leave you if, when you wake up in the morning and you look out the window of life and the day looks a little dreary, I ask that you count your blessings. Count them one by one. Walk out that door with your head up like a child of God. Yeah. Thank you again.
I've had my share of heartaches, but I'm still here. I've had my share of troubles, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Bruises, I've taken my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here. Yes, I am. Loneliness. I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here to it all. Somebody can relate to what I'm about to say. Loneliness, I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Yes, I am. Burdens, I had to bear so many burdens, but I'm still here. Dark days, but I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Disappointments, I've had so many disappointments, but I'm still here. Yeah, through it all. By the grace of God, I made it. I made it. I made it. Yes. Another day's journey. God kept me here. And this is how I made it. It's by the grace of God that I'm still here today. He was always there, no matter what. A very present help in my time of need Standing right there just to see about me I made it through Another day's journey One more day's journey God kept, God kept his loving arms around me It hasn't been easy I made, I made, I made, I made it through journey, One more day journey God kept me here And I made it, I made it, yeah I made it through. Yes, yes I made it I'm still here I'm still here It hasn't been easy Yes, but I, I made it Sometimes I lay awake in the midnight hour, tossed and turned. I made it. Yes. Yes, I made it. I'm still it. here. I'm still here. Tears in my eyes, not knowing how the next day was going to be. Yes. Yes, I made it. I'm still it. here. I'm still here. I'm I made it Yes, I made it
Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks to you for sending us your son, Jesus, for his willingness and steadfastness to teach us the true way of life, for his example in the world, and for his willingness to give himself for us. Help us this morning to listen to his word, listen to his story of two ungrateful sons and a loving father. And as we hear this sacred story, may we find our place in it, and may we learn from it how to grow closer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. One of the great challenges of being a Christian is learning how to count. They don't teach us in grade school. They don't teach us in high school. They don't teach us in college. They don't teach us in graduate school. They don't teach us how to count the right way. It's easy for me to count your blessings. I see what you've got, and I don't have it, and I can count that in a heartbeat. Not so easy for me to count the blessings I've got. Eric Hoffer, a well-known West Coast writer, started out as a communist, wound up as a Christian, said the hardest mathematical proposition for a Christian is learning how to count your blessings. Oh yes. Yeah. Right. So this morning, with your permission, I would like to reflect with you upon one of the great stories that Jesus told his followers. I call it the parable of the two ungrateful sons who didn't know how to count. <laughs> Some people call it the parable of the loving father. That's good. Uh And it's best known as the parable of the prodigal son. Whatever you choose to call it, there is fruit for our reflection in this story. And before we begin, let us remember that when Jesus was a storyteller and he told stories, he told 40 of them, that we have in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He told those stories for a reason. He just wasn't sitting around Cracker Barrel over coffee. (laughs) He had a point. He had a zinger. He had something he was trying to say to us that he wanted us to take home. And for us to remember, not just over Sunday dinner, but over Wednesday, Wednesday supper, You know, the test of a sermon is not what people say about it on Sunday. It's who remembers it on Wednesday supper. And that's what Jesus was working for. He was telling stories with a zinger. So this is a story with a zinger. And I would like to thank my friends uh, in the AV section and Sister Cynthia Ragsdale for her wonderful patient help. This is the longest of the 40. Three parts, three actors. Let's read it together. We'll take a break at each one, like an intermission at a theater, and we'll talk about it, and then we'll move to the end, and we'll see what this story has to teach you and me. Okay. 
about how to do the most difficult thing a Christian can do, which is learning what to count and how to count. Let us begin. Jesus is speaking to his closest followers, you and me, in the presence of hostile adversaries. And he's talking about God and the kingdom of God. And this is from the 15th chapter of Luke. And as you may remember, the 15th chapter of Luke is sometimes called the gospel within the gospel. It's three stories. It's the story about the lost sheep. God goes to find the lost sheep. It's the story about the woman with the lost coin. God goes to find the lost coin. And now this is the story about the two lost sons who didn't know how to count. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About this time, his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to him, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. And then I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Let us pause for a moment. That's act one. That's the first character. You see how it works. And it's helpful as we look at it to remember certain things about ancient Israel and certain practices which we no longer have. And one of those practices was this. When a man died, the land went to the sons. And if he only had two sons, the oldest son got two-thirds of the land and the younger son got one-third of the land. But it didn't happen until the man had died because land was not just wealth, it was life. And so in this part of the story, what the younger son is demanding is outrageous. It's as bad as saying to your daddy, I wish you were dead. Give me your money right now. It's hard to describe today just how bad that is and how offensive that is. You don't do that to your daddy, but he did. And you notice what his father did. And he said, go ahead. Okay. And you can't help but think that when his father said that, he said, some people have to learn things for themselves. Have you ever been there? You ever done that? Ever had a child who might have gone off? Ever been that child yourself? 
This is a child that didn't know how to count. This child had one third of the land coming to him and in the meantime was an honored son. But he couldn't count that high. All he could count was the desire to have what other people had, which was honky tonking down in hot Atlanta. <laughs> and so he sold up, and that's where he went. He went to hot Atlanta, and he, he ran into all the fancy ladies. And he bought drinks for all the boys. And then he was flat busted as a strap. And you know, you know he was really low because in ancient Israel, pigs were dirty. Pigs were foul. And he was busted back to the point that the only job he could get was feeding the hogs. A disgrace to his family. What happens next? What happens when he realizes his mistake and goes home? You need to know this. This was an honor and a shame society. These were tiny villages. Everybody knew everybody else's business. This village knew all about this youngster that had disgraced his old man. And they had a ritual for it. And it was called the ritual of the broken pots. If somebody disgraced the family, what the townspeople of the village would do was get nuts and pieces of rock and put them in pots. And if the person who had disgraced the family came back, they would break the pots and throw the rocks and the nuts at the disgraced person and drive him away from the village. That's what should happen to this young man. Let's see what did happen. May we have the next. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. Mm. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party Began. That's the end of Act Two. That's the second figure. The figure of the loving father who has been disgraced and ashamed by his younger son. And instead of waiting for the villagers to break the pots and hurl the stones and the nuts and drive away the the disgraced son, the father runs out to greet him. Now we have to remember that in ancient times, the older you were, the slower you moved. That may still be true, but not for the same reason. The reason the father of a household would move slowly, majestically, was to emphasize his importance. And he would wear a robe, and the robe would come down to his ankles. 
and to show his ankles would be a disgrace. That's what should have happened if anything happened. But you see what did happen is he ran to greet his son. And you can imagine an old man titter, 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 totter, 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 and his robe around his ankles and his ankles showing and he's flying down the road. He has lowered himself to express his love for his fallen son. Ever been there with a child? Never been that child having to go back home. Ever gone to God on your knees? The son didn't know how to count, but the father did. Once you're mine, you're mine. Now, there are times in the life of the church when people shorten readings up. And this is one of those times. You may go to churches sometimes, and that's the end of the story. You know, we've already been here a little while. We don't need to pack lunch, but we've been here. So you could end that story right now with the no good son coming to his senses, going back home, being welcomed by God the Father, and all is well. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? And it is great. But there's more. There's Act 3. And there's the third figure. May we see the next verse. Meanwhile. The older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what was going on? Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and would not go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, You have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Where are you in this story? Mm. Who are you Mm. in this story? Mm. Are you the little kid brother who shot it all? Are you the big brother who did everything the father asked him to do and is still outraged? Or are you on your best day, the father, the mother, who says, this child of mine once was dead, but now is alive. We had to celebrate. 
You see how this story works. Yes. It's a zinger. It's meant for us to think about on Wednesday night supper. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was an older brother. Only had one younger brother. But I get this older brother. My father was a teacher in Nashville, had, you know, a little money, but not a lot. We didn't go out for dinner very often. When we did, as the older brother, I knew I had to save mom and dad some money. So I always had chicken. <laughs> My little brother would come along later when times were a little better. He never thought twice about that. He always had steak. Big brother gets chicken, little brother gets steak. How fair is that? I get this older brother, don't you? Oh, yeah. But you know, he had the same problem the little brother did. He didn't know how to count. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had been there all along. Yes, he had done what he was supposed to do all along. Yes, that's wonderful. He had it all. He had it made, and he had two-thirds of the land coming to him when his father died, but that wasn't good enough. He had to count what the little kid got instead of what he already had. And isn't that you, and isn't that me, and isn't that human, and don't we look around, and we go out into the parking lot, and we say, boy, I wish I had that car. Yeah. <laughs> or look at that suit, or look at that dress, or goodness gracious, how much money do they have? We all do it. Yes. We forget how to count. Yes. Jesus is telling us this story so that you and I can remember who we are and whose we are. Yes. And we are children of the living God. And if we want to grow closer to God, and we do, Jesus is pointing the way. Count what you have, not what you want. <laughs>
thank everybody for yesterday's spring fling Amen. and before we came in here the ministers were gathered as they always do for prayer and I heard how good it was so on behalf of Miss Hemphill and everyone thank you for the spring fling well done. and Miss Willie Carson asks our prayers for her twin cousin in surgery and her family and herself loving God be with this good and faithful woman and all her family and grant them strength and healing and in the name of Jesus Christ we pray these things Amen, Amen. Thank you ma'am Thank you ma'am And now as this service comes to an end let us remember Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So, be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.